to simulate an angler caught crappie situation and then see what the mortality rate is. That's kind of weird to see. We're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> We got ice. All right, got the snowmobile ready. Brett's got his fancy rig going here. Look at that screen, by the way. Sheesh. And the boys are getting ready. There we go. Little walleye up super, super shallow. Just a baby right there. No barrow trauma, potential barrow trauma issues here. We're in about five and a half feet. <laughs> so all jokes aside, we're out fishing in North Dakota, the land of tons and tons of ice. So the interesting thing about back home is that it's been raining a lot and ice conditions are brutal. And sometimes you gotta travel to find good ice. So that's what we're doing. We're over here uh, in North Dakota on Devil's Lake. Um, and we're just gonna be catching a bunch of stuff today, I think is gonna be the plan. So um, anywho, that's, that's that. We're gonna keep on fishing here. <laughs> okay, so I was just on my phone replying to a little bit of Instagram drama on Aaron Weeb's latest post, um, and I dropped the bait down and got crunched by this beautiful walleye. Look at that thing. Unbelievable. Uh, we're fishing in about 5.8 feet of water right now. Check out this beauty right here. Not bad. In a year where it's been really tough to find good ice and, uh, you know, which has made it hard to get on some better bites this year, uh, this beauty was definitely a welcome, welcome fish to the day. So we're gonna keep fishing, share some tips in this video, and uh, hopefully put a few more beauties on the ice like this guy. Back to the depths. Or not depths, I guess. Back to the five, five and a half feet. <laughs> so we got a little group of us out here on this fishing trip right now. Uh, we got TJ from TJ's Guide Service YouTube channel. Um, and then we also got our buddy Christian Hoffman and then we got Brett McComas. And I just got off the phone with Brett. And where Brett is set up right now, he's set up in deeper water, just kind of posting up for some perch, um, the daytime perch bite. Uh, me and TJ have been fishing up in shallow water here. He's, he's down the break a bit. Um, and I just got off the phone with Brett and he told me uh, that he has marked a few fish. Um, so I'm not sure that I'm seeing more fish than he is. Um, but he said his quote on it was, the fish that he's, he's seen so far have kind of been like, like Gull Lake walleyes, which basically means they come up slow, real slow and look analyze and then eventually turn you down. That's the classic Gull Lake move. Um, but I guess my thought process with that is just anytime you get to fish somewhere, um, and if you're fishing for walleyes, if you have the option to fish up, way up in shallow water versus deeper structure, I like to always pick shallow water just because it seems like those fish are just gonna be more aggressive more often than not. Look at this guy. Well, I just want to, you know, just come over and get a waypoint what? real quick. What he's doing? Find your spots. 
Oh, look at that thing. <laughs> TJ's like, why are you pointing a camera at me? Get this that camera out of my this is actually my self-defense mechanism. You put a camera in front of people and all of a sudden they leave the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I was, do you mind if I do no, this? No, mess around. I don't, I don't care. I just want to see what you're, what it's looking like. I'm trying to piece things together. And now that I got the cell phone going. So what we got going on right here is this is, this is weird. There we go. This is a bay right here. Mm. And then way out there there's like a stump field or a tree field or whatever uh where brett is set up to brett and christian are set up to try and catch some perch but now i got dudes monkeying with my units look at this he's got his own unit literally coming up to your holes look at that hey he's got an just, auger he's got a unit can I, just fish your I think he's bit? got i think he has fishing rods too what are those? These ones catch fish, though. Yeah, so fair, I'm coming here. fair point. <laughs> there must be a big boulder there, huh? Yeah, maybe. It's too round to be. There could be stumps. There could be boulders. Maybe. Yeah. yeah they were the ones that were set up right next to me. I guess that road bed just comes straight out. Yeah. So I suppose. Maybe they move deeper during the day like that. Oh, there's one. Wasn't even looking. This one didn't come up and cream it right away, but he's he's active. Hey. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. Man, they really, really crunch it, I've noticed. <laughs> that the fish just came up and creamed it and it's halfway down his his belly, but not bad. Jeez. I can handle them. Let me unhook them first and then we can talk a little bit more. Oh, I did. The hook popped out. Oh my gosh, what a mess. There we go. Another nice walleye. Another shallow water fish. This time I actually had the live scope going for you. It definitely helped to put it in forward mode to get a better view for y'all. Um, but yeah, TJ just pulled up. We were talking about what we were gonna do this morning. I do know like it's pretty notorious um, on this lake. Like there's the morning bite for walleyes and then people like to go out and fish for perch during the day and that's just kind of a thing. Uh, but on a fishery like this, that's just, you know, such a good walleye fishery. I can't imagine we can't just keep catching walleyes during the day if we really wanted to. Pretty big lake. <laughs> There's one. Definitely a nice walleye right there. Is he going to turn around and give me another chance? Probably not. <laughs> one. <laughs> I love shallow water. The only, the only problem with shallow water is you flip them up onto the ice and they still got a lot of fight left in them. That was cool. I actually just dropped down. I was over talking to TJ and man, they're just angry. Look at him. He's just so mad and angry. Look how he's all flared out. And just, God, they're just plump. They're plump out here, man. They are healthy. They're angry. And uh, I like them a lot. I'm not going to lie. I like them. Well, the best part about fishing shallow is the fact that they just woof it. Um, so, actually, I think we're going we're gonna to keep that guy. Um, but it's nice to, I love just having my tools right here. Um, I spent a lot of time thinking about my snowmobile setup. And just being able to, like, fish right here and have everything I need is like something I put a lot of thought into. So I love having t some tools right here, a rod holder, phone holder right here if I need it. I can look at the map right here if I want. And then I can throw a bunch of stuff over there kind of on the back of my sled there, so. All right, so here's a quick rundown on what we got going on here. I have my finicky fooler dead stick set up right here. That's how stinking close we are to shore. I looked around up here as well. 
Um, but that's how close we are to shore. Here's the old snowmobile setup. Got a buddy over here. Looks like he's drilling holes. There's always dudes moving in on you. You gotta watch out for that, I will say. So I got my snowmobile jigging set up right here. Um, but as you can see, I got a bunch of stuff piled up on here. But I do have one little goodie if I can sneak my way into here. Oh, I got so much stuff in there. That box right there. Ooh. There it is. Some delicious pizza. This is the best fishing snack. I'll get that in the light so you can really appreciate it. The best fishing snack you can possibly pack when you go on a fishing trip, just order a pizza the night before, stick it in your box, and uh, you'll be stinking good to go. As long as you can keep the vultures away.